All right, and welcome back. This morning, a stopgap bill to keep the government funded is on its way to the U.S. House, and that bill includes more than $12 billion to help Ukraine. Joining us live now this morning to talk about the bill, some of the challenges facing our country right now, is Valley Congressmember Jim Costa. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much, Megan. These are challenging times that we are living in, for sure. And first, I mean, of course, we have our Hurricane Ian coverage. Uh, we're just thinking and praying for those in Florida right now. Hurricane Ian is wiping out roads, infrastructure, and this bill includes more than $18 billion for FEMA, which is great support for them. Are there any sticking points in this that could come up between the two parties and somehow prevent this from being passed? Well, I certainly hope not. Uh, we all, uh, our hearts are with the folks in Florida for the devastating impacts of the hurricane. And of course, it's not over uh, rebuilding uh, so much of the, the state that has been devastated. And the hurricane, uh, sadly, is now continuing to move on uh, and it's going to be hitting South Carolina. It just reminds us that with the impacts of climate change, that in fact, We've got to ensure that we do everything we possibly can to protect the American public. This funding for FEMA will go a long ways toward helping us rebuild, but obviously a lot more that <clears throat> will have to be done. And Congressman, of course, we want to talk about the war in Ukraine. This is now more than half a year. We've provided tens of billions of dollars in aid to Ukraine. We're providing now more weapons, some Helmar long-range missile systems. But, um, you know, President Putin made a direct threat of nuclear weapons. Do you think, as someone who's been in Congress um, and seen um, different conflicts before, are we doing enough to deter Russia and have we been clear with Putin? I think we've been very clear with uh, Putin and I think that the uh, the president and the Congress on a bipartisan basis has come together on this issue uh, beginning uh, earlier this year. Uh, three weeks ago today, I was in Ukraine. I was in Kiev, uh, wow. I think first member of Congress to spend the night on Friday and Saturday at a Yalta European uh, strategy conference and met with the Zelensky government. Uh, the Ukrainians are brave people. I was in Bushka, uh, where the, uh, the furthest advance that Russia had got, which is a suburb, kind of like from the distance of uh, Old Fig Garden to downtown Fresno. Uh, that's how close the Russians got to and, and saw a, a, a mass grave site where 166 people, mainly women and children, had been buried. It's horrific what, what Russia is doing. And this is the test of our time, not just for Ukraine, but for democracies around the world. And I think that uh, uh, Putin badly overestimated you know, his military, underestimated the Ukrainians' will to stand and fight for their country. Mm -hmm. And whether or not the West, uh, NATO and uh, the United States and others would in fact rally <clears throat> and simply not slap Putin's hand as previously had been done in Georgia and Crimea. Yes, in 2014. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, helping Ukraine, helping the U.S. Critical. in turn. Really, truly, it is important for our national security as well. Congressman, here at home, um, you know it, you hear it from your constituents. We have our gas prices back up, inflation. We know some of these things are impacted by global happenings as well. How are federal policies right now curbing and fighting inflation? Well, the Federal Reserve Board obviously continues to be um, focused on maintaining uh, uh, the interest rates is a tool to combat inflation. Uh, we didn't like the numbers last month. Uh, the European numbers are, are, are higher. This is a worldwide impact because of supply chains, because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and other multiple factors. And we're going to have to work through this. But there are other parts of the economy. We've created uh, over 18 million, uh, no, 10 million jobs. Uh, we reduced um, unemployment uh, by 18 million Americans who now have work. <clears throat> and so there are other positive signs in the economy. But gas prices and inflation costs for food uh, concern every American. They concern me, and we're trying to uh, deal with supply chain issues to bring down those costs. Um, and, and gas prices have gone down, although they've gone up here recently. We're going to have to continue to focus on all of the above.
All right, Congressman Jim Costa, Congressman, thank you. And that vote happening later this afternoon. And so best of luck to you there in D.C. today, I am sure. So uh, be safe if you get any of those, maybe a little trickle of wind, uh, something up the coast there from Hurricane Ian. So stay safe. Yes, thank you very much.